Hello, my name is Trevor Park, and I would like to welcome everyone to a layout tour of the Fern Creek and Western Garden Railroad. This railroad is located in Santa Cruz, California, which is about an hour and a half south of San Francisco. I started this railroad with my friend Eric Child, and today we are going to be taking a look at the railroad almost a year and a half after construction commenced. What you're looking at is the Ericsville Yard. The Ericsville Yard was where we started the railroad in 2014. It started with just the second track over where you see the passing siding. Originally the line started there and we had one track to the side of it that was used as the passing siding. However, after figuring out that the curves were too tight on that track for certain locomotives, we switched over to the track that you see on top of the patio, which is the furthest track to the outside. This is where trains start. This is the start of the grade over Birch Mountain. Birch Mountain is a very rigorous mountain with grades exceeding four and a half percent. What you're looking at here is Fern Creek. Fern Creek was the water feature that was in place on the railroad from the original railroad that was here before we started the Fern Creek and Western. As the train works its way up the hill, it passes the Priya Canyon Mine. And in the right-hand view of the camera, you can see the Priya Canyon Trestle. The Priya Canyon Trestle is the longest trestle on the railroad and stands almost 12 inches tall. The other side of the trestle is where the train enters tunnel number one. Tunnel number one is the longest tunnel on the entire railroad, exceeding six feet long. After exiting tunnel number one on the other end of the mountain, it crosses Old Birch Mountain Road and crosses the Upper Fern Creek Bridge. The Upper Fern Creek Bridge is next to the Fern Creek Falls. The Fern Creek Falls was put in after the water feature was built. It was put in when the Fern Creek in Western was started, as opposed to the rest of the water feature, which was put in when the original Garden Railroad was here before the Fern Creek in Western. Behind the birch trees, you will see Birch Canyon Straits. Birch Canyon Straits is one of the longest straight stretches on the entire railroad. Birch Canyon Straits is also one of the steepest hillsides on the railroad. What you're looking at here is Log Camp. This is actually Camp 2. It's slightly counterintuitive because the Log Camp numbers actually work from the front up the grade to Log Camp 2. Log Camp 2 is the last log camp on the line and is also the largest log camp. This is served by Shea number 10 mostly. Shea number 10 is a three truck Shea and in general it does a run up here twice a day. Log Camp is also the summit of the railroad. There's also a passing siding at Log Camp where trains frequently meet when the engine isn't switching the camp. Originally the siding was much shorter and we couldn't fit much of a train on it. But in 2015 we extended the siding down an extra three feet. So now we can fit about four more cars on the siding. Now heading downgrade and just beyond the log camp, you'll see the Ericsville Viaduct. This is what bridges the town of Ericsville on the railroad's trip downgrade into Parkston. This is Side Yard Straits. This is the longest straight section on the entire railroad. This was a project in itself in that we originally had cinder blocks supporting pieces of plywood cut into strips that supported the track as it went down the side yard. After finding that that was a failure with the wood warping, we decided to try a new method. After doing a lot of planning, we decided to pound steel pipes into the ground. Inside the steel pipe is a PVC pipe. 
that is able to be adjusted so we can get the height correct should the wood or the pipes settle. On top of it is pressure treated wood. What you're looking at here is camp one. This camp is actually sitting over tunnel number two on the railroad. There's only space for two log cars on this siding. It is frequently served on the turn that serves camp two. It is an artificial plateau, as a matter of fact, sitting on top of the tunnel, and is lined with plastic with wood and cinder blocks on top. After clearing Camp 1 heading down grade, the train crosses the Twin Bridges. The Twin Bridges are both through Warren bridges built out of wood. One crosses the Dry Creek Red, which also helps the track pass the palm tree that stands in the yard. The other bridge crosses over the lower main line. The train makes a full loop around the front yard crosses back under itself on its return to Ericsville. After clearing the twin bridges, the train heads down grade on a steep 4.5% grade into Parkston. The grade through here, though intense, is not as intense as in the back, given its wide curves. The track is supported by bricks the entire way up the hill. Originally, this part of the railroad was completely flat. We built up the hill and the grade, so it heads up grade to clear the lower main line. Below the grade is the town of Parkston. Parkston is a company town and is mostly there because of the fact that the sawmill sits in the town. Parkston is also the larger town of the two on the railroad. Parkston is served by one station as well as a freight depot. And Parkston has many industries that are around it, such as the sawmill, a machine shop, and a stockyard. Visible on the other side of the crossing of Main Street is the switch that divides the Parkston yard from the track that goes back to the backyard. If you take the diverging route, it takes you to Parkston yard. The straight route takes you through tunnel number two and into the backyard, down side yard straights once again. If the train takes the diverging route, it heads to the Parkston Yard. And it comes down the straightaway where it hits the switch that takes it back around into Parkston. The other side of the switch takes it over the bridge, which will eventually become the bridge over the extension of Fern Creek. On the other side of the bridge is the track crossing over the pathway. The switch visible in the shot is the track that leads into the engine servicing facility that services the engines of the Fern Creek and Western. On the other side of the switch, it heads into the yard. The Parkston yard is the larger of the two yards on the railroad. Working from the driveway in, the tracks are the outbound track, the inbound track, two storage tracks, the tail track for the caboose track, and the corresponding caboose track that sits behind it. Included in the caboose track is also the rip track, or repair in place track. On the other side of that, is the engine servicing tracks. The track closest to the inside pathway is the repair track where locomotives are serviced if there's overflow or if an engine needs to be repaired it's pushed into the engine house by the Parkston switcher. On the other side of the yard the track crosses again over the pathway and then past the log pond. Passing the log pond it heads out curves and then heads on a straightaway back into town. Once the train takes the straight route it heads around a curve heading up grade it heads into tunnel number two, which goes under log camp number one. On the other side of tunnel number two, the train heads down the low line of side yard straights. The final place in the line is Ericsville proper. This is the actual town of Ericsville. Today, this is where trains actually start and terminate if they're going to run from the back all the way around the front and back to the back again. This is the station that you can see on the left hand side, and in the center of the view is the town. Behind it is the freight shed, and what you see sitting there is the South Pacific Coast Number 3, which is our primary passenger train we run on the railroad. Well, that about wraps up our tour. On behalf of everyone who has made the Fern Creek and Western what it is today, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to tour our layout. If you would like more information on our Garden Railroad, please visit our website, fcwgrr.com, for more information on the railroad and its events. And if you would like to stay up to date on the happenings around the Fern Creek and Western, make sure to join the Fern Creek and Western Garden Railroad Facebook group. Before we end this video, there's a few people I would like to thank who have helped us get the Fern Creek and Western to where it is today. 
The first person I would like to thank is Chris Gupta. Many of the engines you saw running today were donated generously to the Fern Creek and Western by Chris, and without him we wouldn't have near the equipment fleet that we have today. The second person I would like to thank is Paul Nolan. Paul has helped us immensely with the construction of the railroad this year, and without him, most of the shots that you see in here wouldn't have ballast. So I'd like to really thank Paul Nolan for all the work he has put into the railroad this year. And third and finally, I would like to thank Eric Child. Without Eric, the railroad wouldn't even be in existence today. Eric owns the property that the railroad runs on, and has helped me with every aspect of construction from start to what you're seeing today. Eric has been incredibly supportive of this project and I can't thank him enough for all the work he has put into it. He has helped me fulfill the dream of creating the Fern Creek and Western and I can't thank him enough for everything he has put into it. It has been an incredibly fun project to work on and I'm looking forward to all the work we're going to do on it in the future. Thanks again for watching and we hope to see you at one of our events in the near future.